So this guy, I am painting on an 8x10. This is a Fredericks watercolor canvas board. The reason that I go with the watercolor canvas board is it is so smooth to paint on. So blending, the wet into wet, we're going to be doing wet into wet blending. So if you aren't familiar with that or you have trouble with it, hopefully that will help you today for this one. It, that is really easy to do the smoother your canvas your canvas is. It's easier to get fine detail the smoother your canvas is. And you think watercolor canvas board, that's for watercolor. I don't even, I don't, most people I don't even think use these for watercolor. They're great though for acrylic paintings. I didn't even do oil paintings on them and they were fine. So that is the canvas I'm using. And just for transparency, this canvas was provided to me by Fredericks. Thank you, Fredericks. They are already the only canvas. I mean, for you, you guys know this, I've only used Fredericks for a very long time because of problems I've had with other lesser brand canvases, like any generic canvas that you get at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, any of those. I hate them. Blick. Generic, that is the one, one supply. I like generic paintbrushes, not generic canvases. So I've drawn this out. I've traced it onto a piece of tracing paper so that I can use transfer paper and I'll do that live so you'll be able to see how to use tracing and transfer paper. We'll be transferring the image. So if you don't have this drawn out already, head over to my website. Link is in the video description. Get this image and you can paint this right along with me. I got this from either Unsplash or Pixabay so it's royalty free. You have full rights to use it in your own work. You can sell it. You can make prints because we're all using the same royalty free reference photo. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, notice that I did not draw the bird directly on the canvas. That's a big mistake a lot of people make is to take their charcoal pencil or their gra uh, it charcoal is actually not that big of a deal, but they'll take a graphite pencil and sketch everything out. One, you've got sketch lines already all over the place because you're erasing, you're moving stuff, you're changing stuff, but the graphite will always show through to an extent parts of the acrylics because the acrylics, most of the acrylics that we use are fairly translucent. Your graphite lines, you'll have bits where it will show through your acrylics and especially in the way that we layer and glaze or the way I layer and glaze. If you're painting on with a palette knife, not really a big deal, but for this, for this method, the best thing to do is paint your entire background. You're not trying to paint around your subject so you don't mess it up. You just paint the whole background and that's going to give you smoother coverage. So what, the first problem is that graphite will show through their acrylics with painting this method. The second issue is that you're trying to paint around it. Acrylic dries too fast. You do not have time to sit there trying to paint around the bird and still get smooth blending. If you're making, if you're doing like an impressionistic style, there are styles where that can work. This is not one of them. So it's better if we just paint the whole background like it's not, like don't even worry about the subject. That's why we've got them already drawn out on tracing and tra or the tracing paper and we'll transfer it when we're ready. So what I do to clean this, I'm just going to take just a regular razor blade. Now you can get scrapers and that's a better way to go, but I don't know where mine is. So I just grabbed a razor blade so I could scrape this and I'm going to scrape off the paint that is all dried or starting to dry. And this is a new wave glass palette. The setup here, I have this in a master Masterson, I think it's called the Masterson's container. It has a lid. It works like a big, huge Ziploc where that glass palette sets in perfectly. And I just scrape it as I go where there we go i'm going to use this is a number 12 this is a filbert teclon bristle filbert from master's touch so those are the ones i think you get you can get them on amazon i've seen them there too but it's mostly michael's now the important thing here i need this entire thing to stay wet the whole time i'm working on it that is wet into wet paint stays wet you don't let it start to dry so i'm going to start i dip my paintbrush in a little bit of water so i thin this out and i'm going to just come over here i'm going to cover the entire thing with pretty thick Probably should have got some yellow out too. Now, one of the drawbacks of painting on a canvas board, I love them. Well, no, let me take that. Let me rephrase that. I love uh, Frederick's canvas boards. I do not like like generic ones. They warp like you wouldn't believe. But one of the downsides is I have to hold it while I'm painting the background. Like once it's finished painting, it's just as good as a canvas. It's just, you have to, it's kind of a pain with it moving. Oh, that color is actually pretty good. And I keep dipping the paintbrush in more water every time I lift or get more paint because I'm working on a dry canvas. Now, when I start adding white and black and other colors to blend in, I don't need to keep dipping it in water every time because the canvas will already be wet. So you kind of have to balance that out, how much paint versus water you need on every individual, like if I've already got a lot of water on the canvas, I don't need to keep adding more water to the paint every time I reload the brush. I don't care about brush strokes here because we're gonna blend all that out. Okay, let's start throwing in. I'm going to start with the white. Now you have to be careful anywhere where you add a bit of white and I didn't notice I didn't dip in water this time. Um, anywhere where you add a bit of white, if it touches where green is, that's going to create a more grayish tone. So if I don't want a green gray tone, I need to make sure the white and the black areas are not touching while this is wet. 
but in this case, I actually don't care if I have a, a gray green tone, but that is just something to keep in mind anytime you're using those two colors and working in a wet and wet style. Now, if this starts to dry, I just need to take the fine mist sprayer. Link for this should be in the video description. Light mist there. Those are all, the description. I think all of those are my Amazon affiliate links. So, you know, helps me out a little bit. Offsets the cost of eggs. A little bit in here. I just want to, now th here's the trick. I want this to be blotchy. I want darks. I want lights. I want various colors in here. I don't want one solid color. Okay, and that's gonna actually, I can already feel that starting to dry in a couple of spots. You also don't wanna spray so much that it starts to run like crazy either. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna reload with a little bit of black for some of the background and maybe a little bit of red oxide. I thought I was gonna use that other red color. I'm not, I'm gonna, I think I'll keep it more of a reddish brown tone. Now I'm gonna clean that brush off so I'm not mixing white and black on the brush and getting way gray. I'm gonna get a little bit of my red oxide. Burnt sienna would be pretty similar. A little bit as I'm going through here, not too much, just a couple of spots. Okay, now I am going to take my mop brush. My mop brush, I'm throwing them on the ground. They're really blush brushes. They are very, any kind of blush brush I can get. I will usually go to like a TJ Maxx, somewhere at Ross, the places that sell like cheap, cheap everything. Um, sometimes you can get these for really cheap or I've got them in the video description, hopefully, if not, they're on my website. But these are super soft and they don't shed like a normal mop brush would. So if you get like one that's made for painting, they're gonna shed like crazy. Oop, to what? So I don't know if you can see, I've got this little basketball texture going in here. I sprayed too much water. So I'm gonna actually wipe my brush off, reload it with some green, thicken that paint up. So if it starts to, you go to mop brush it and it's like, oh, that just turned into watercolor. Yeah, you put too much water on there. Throw a little bit more paint. Let's see if I can blend down here. It's not too wet down here. And I'm just doing little half circles. I barely want the brush to touch the canvas. If you push too hard, you are going to, you don't want to lift it. I don't want to see a bunch of paint here. The paint needs to stay there. This is just a light hand barely letting it touch that canvas. And you don't wanna over blend. When I say blend, what we're doing is getting rid of our brush strokes. I'm not trying to mix all the colors together. I mean, along the edges, they will blend and mix, but think of it more, I'll wipe some of this off as it starts to pick up paint. Think of it more as just softening out those brush strokes. And I'm going every which direction, it's mostly little half circles. The paint's a little thick, it won't blend well with this either. Now, if it gets to where your brush has picked up too much paint and you start creating brush strokes, I've got a few in here where it's just a little too wet, switch to a clean one, a clean, dry brush. If this is wet because of water or if it's wet because of paint, it will not work right. Little half circles. I've got a couple of spots. Most of this looks great and I'll leave it how it is, but there are a couple spots at the bottom just because of the way it was sitting on my easel. I didn't quite get enough paint down there. I'm gonna reload that a bit because it's kind of giving me this weird textured look that I don't want. I'm gonna weird mark up there too. Little half circles, and if it starts to dry, you wanna mist it with your fine mist sprayer. And there we go, look at this soft, like super soft. It's a little bit more neon green looking to me on the camera than mine actually though. You know what, I think I would like mine to be toned down a little bit more though, because mine is pretty bright. I'm gonna take it while it's still wet. I can, but you if it started to dry, that is, like if it really started to dry, you wouldn't wanna keep reworking it because you would start to lift some of the previous layers. But I do wanna soften some of this green, green out. And this has a little bit of green, a little bit of white, a little bit of, uh, what is the color I just said? Red oxide. I wanna just soften some of that up. Now, can you imagine trying to do this and trying to blend around the bird if you had drawn him out earlier? So you can really see now why it was so important. Oh, that needs more paint. That was starting to dry weird. So that's what I was talking about. 
no big deal, just add more paint. Yeah, that was definitely starting to dry weird. It lifted where I did not want it. So you've gotta be careful, the dry time there. Now what's gonna happen? Let's say that just totally ruined it, what I did. Dry it and paint over it. It's no big deal. So don't like worry too much about, oh, I'm afraid to mess it up. Who cares? Dry it and paint over it. The more layers you do, it looks better anyway. You get more depth in it, the way that the light will refract through each of those layers. This brush is getting a bit wet, so I'll have to switch in just a second. I'm just doing some of the heavier blending. Yeah, I like this softness. This color is much better. So let's switch over to the cleaner brush. Now, one of the things that I'm having, I'm fighting against the white of the canvas. I actually, I'm getting a basketball thing here where it's kind of that basketball texture. It's lifting some of the paint and exposing the white of the canvas. So, my solution, I'm going to dry this and I'm gonna put another layer on. What that, that is going to do is, I'm no longer fighting against the white of the canvas. If a little lifts, you don't see this little greeniness that's happening. It will cover it completely. And it's a very fast thing to do, so why not do it? So, let me clean first step. When you're gonna dry that and do something like that, clean your brushes real quick before they start to dry. And when I clean them, I just dip the tip of the bristles in the water. Don't use a lot of water here because they won't work if they're not dry. So tip the, dip, dip the tip, wow, say that a bunch of times fast. And then I'm gonna work that on the paper towel in little circles and dry that out. Like really get that dry, just little circles until, and I'm pushing pretty hard there, until that's completely dry. If it's cold, it's probably wet still, keep going. So I use two brushes, I've got to do that on first. So I don't know if this will show. Can you see how it's a little bit gritty there, or grainy? The camera's not picking it up super great, but that's why I want to redo this, because I'm not in love with that. But it's such an easy fix that there's no reason not to do it really quick. I mean, it may take the painting a little bit longer, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. We're gonna load that up with my green. And this layer, this time through, will be easier because I've, I'm, like I said, I'm not fighting against the white this time. I've gotta add water because I am going up against dry canvas. And you have to make sure that previous layer is dry. If not, chunks will start to lift up. It really has to be dry. I mean, that's essentially why that graininess started to happen. Parts were starting to dry as I was adding more paint. My timing was just a little bit off and it just kind of pulled some of that up. But now let's say it pulls some up this time. You won't even notice it because it's going against green instead of before white was pretty obvious. But if it happens again, I'm now against, whoops, I'm gonna knock that over. The joys of a canvas board. Get that wet again. We'll grab some white. Yeah, this is definitely gonna look better. So if someone is bidding on this, I'm just making sure it's really pretty for you. Now I don't need the background to be exactly like the reference photo. I just wanted green and soft, out of focus. If you put this paint on too thick, it will not blend right. So keep that in mind. So I'm just gonna take some red oxide, go on in there. Get that nice soft look. I was gonna put the black, I actually like the red oxide better. See, the more layers you do, if that ever happens and you redo it like I just did, do not hesitate and think, but I really don't want to redo it. it. It was at one point kind of okay. Trust me, redo it. It always looks better the next layers. There's no benefit to not doing it again. Okay. Before it blunt dries, I'm going to quickly go over this little half circle. See, look, it just blends so smooth and so easy now because I'm not fighting the white of the canvas. So what would another alternative be? I could have just painted it solid green and let it dry. I was trying to go quick because, you know, live stream times, but make things a little more challenging. But this looks so soft and so much better because I redid it. And it's not like, well, you, you messed up the first layer then. No, that's really not it. It's that it won't come out this soft. It won't look that good the first time. I was just hoping it would because, you know, I'm going to ignore all my experience. There we go. That looks, per oh, I love it. Okay, 
I'm excited because even if this doesn't sell, I can go on my own wall at this rate. I, I'm a fan of green. Green is a really good accent color to teal. Okay, let me clean that brush. See, look how quick that went too, because I wasn't fighting the white of the canvas this time, so that layer was really fast. Okay, let me dry that. So we've got the tracing and transfer paper. What we wanna do, whenever you use tracing and transfer paper, you always want two pieces of tape on either side of the upper corner. Don't just put the tracing paper with the tape right here because it's gonna, as you're working, it's gonna keep moving. So we're gonna tape that in place on both sides to help stabilize it. Wrap that around. Now we take our tracing paper. I've got a link for the Royal Langnickel one. I can't find the Low Cornell one anymore, but the Royal Langnickel should work just fine. And we're gonna slide that under there. And I'm going to find a stylus. I should have put this in the little video description too. This is just a little cheapy stylus thing, little metal tip on the end there. And I'm going to trace over this. Now, whenever you're painting, you don't want to get rid of, like once you get this traced out, don't throw the tracing paper away. Save it, because let's say you're painting for a while and things are just not looking right, but you're not sure why. You can take your original drawing and put it back over what you've been painting and see where you started to get off on stuff. Because sometimes you just make lines a little too thick, things aren't looking right. This is a way for you to continuously check your work against itself, so you can make it easier. I always hang on to these tracing uh, or drawing, line drawings until the painting is completely done in case I want to check myself. Before I wreck myself, I'm old. Any of the young people are like, what is she talking about? Okay, that should be good. There, we've got the branch. Branch obviously doesn't need to be perfect. I actually made mine quite a bit thinner than what the reference photo had. And then we should lift it. And be, oh, I missed a whole section here of the branch. I can't see his face, isn't really showing well. Push a little bit harder. Now, if you're using, this doesn't work with all acrylic paints well. This is one of the reasons that I like Liquitex Basics so much because it does work well. But it, let's say you're using Liquitex Heavy Body or the Liquitex uh, Soft Body. Those paints are super glossy and super thick. They're very, very plasticky. I mean, it's acrylic, so of course they're plasticky, but they're really plasticky. This doesn't want to stick to it that well. It kind of will, but not great. So just keep that in mind. If you're having a hard time, that may be why. The Liquitex Basics, especially if you thin them out a decent amount, like I do, that it sticks pretty well. Anytime where I've used an airbrush, it sticks really well over that, normally. But then I'll randomly have a day where no, like all my tricks, everything I know, which should make tracing and transfer paper work well, just won't work, won't stick, won't show up, I, and I've never figured out. In some of those cases, it's like, okay, I guess that's just happening today. Put that to the side. So now we've got our sky chicken all drawn out. And I'm going to start by focusing on his head. I'm gonna zoom my reference photo. Again, that reference photo is over at my website. I'm just gonna block in mostly black. I'm gonna get it pretty dark and then I can put the blues on top because the blues will require a lot of white anyway. I think that will make it easier. So I'm just gonna block that in on his head. Remember with painting, everything is a layering process. I don't, see, not even paying attention. But the good news is because that line that just went where it wasn't supposed to go, that's still wet, that's easy fix. Take a clean brush, a little bit of water, and it works like an eraser. Erase where I went outside the line. I shouldn't be allowed to do things right now. I should only be allowed to nap. Or maybe play Hogwarts. I haven't played that in weeks now. I've just been too busy. Okay, and actually, let me move this. This is making it move too much, and it's actually really annoying. There we go. Much better. And just fill that in. Now see, this is another bonus. Let's say you filled it in like this, but you weren't sure, okay, but now I don't know where the black goes versus the blue. Well, you've got that, that line drawing. You're fine. You could put it on and redraw the eyes. Let's say you lost that. Not a problem.
Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with the black. We've got the wings. I'm gonna kind of skip though so it's in two sections and I can see where the feather type shifts. I don't care if it's super solid, I just need something dark that the blue can go between or go on top of. Same thing on this wing. And then here. And the tail. Now, right there, that's a little bit frayed. I don't know if you can see. The camera tends to smooth things out, but I need to go and smooth that. That should not be frayed. Okay, that works. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and get a solid for where the, the bird's body is going to go now, so that can be dry. And that is going to be white and really just the red oxide will work well. I don't, I don't think I'll even need to add uh, much in the way of yellow, maybe. Yeah, I think I do need a little bit of yellow. I'll grab that. Knocking stuff on the floor. Now there has to be white in this because otherwise, especially with the yellow, is way too translucent. It would not show up. That's way too peach. Oh my gosh. You know what? That's fine though. We'll put the right colors on over it. We'll just use this as the base. That is not even close to the right color. I went too tan. I just want to cover the green so I'm not fighting against that once I get into the details and the feathers. So I'll do a bunch of glazing most likely. I don't care if a little bit of green peeks through. That actually is better. It makes them really feel a part of that scene. Especially if, let's say you had painted the background with purple. You would want to let some of that purple come pick up in the birds somewhere. It helps them to feel like it's a part of the same painting. This will actually be white, but we'll use this as the dark area. That'll work. We'll put more darks and lights over that. Okay, let me dry this. Believe it or not, this is a good place for him to be. It, it looks scary, but that's what we want it to be. And this is a mistake that a lot of people make. They get here and like, okay, done. It looks like a bird. No, it doesn't. It doesn't look good at all. I mean, I can tell it's the shape of a bird, but that is not done. But one of the biggest reasons people's work look bad is because they didn't finish it. It's not because they're bad at it. It's because they didn't finish it. Like this one. This doesn't look good because he's not finished. Not because I did anything wrong. So we've got the pupil. I'm not going to worry about the white over the eye. I'll put that on later. And then for the eye, I mix a little bit of the black with red oxide, and that will give me a brown color. I don't even have to get brown out. More black will make it less red, obviously. I mean, I know that sounds redundant, but if you're, your brown you're mixing is like, wow, that's really red. That is why. I'm using a synthetic hog haired liner brush. This one is a number one, I believe. I've got to thin it out with water because it's not flowing quite like I want. So just by adding a bit of water, that will help. And 
And then we've got a gray ring around his eye. Dark gray, so just black and white, at least to start with. So it still looks very flat. That's normal for this stage. That's what it's supposed to look like. It looks actually a little bit ridiculous. I'm gonna use that gray as well. Get the line or the detail on his beak, if a little green shows through, great. of blotchiness with the black up there. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and let's come back to the eye. This is the eye. I'm just gonna put little dots right around this ring with white. Oops, that's too much water on that. Dab that on my paper towel. that down and then my brown was a little bit too dark I'm gonna put a bit of red over it right around the pupil mostly on the bottom that looks better couldn't see it at all okay while that dries I'm gonna do a little bit of white detailing around the beak hook there. I'm going to take a clean brush and just smudge that a bit. Gonna darken that up. Just paying attention to where the little lines are. We've got some skinny little lines here. And notice it's not just take a black line and go all the way across. It's just a couple of spots. Really look at your reference photo, assuming you can find it on my site. Get a shadow right under that ring. And then, okay, that will be dark. We'll get that sorted in a moment. He's got his little nose. Okay, we're gonna start, actually put the highlight on the eye next. Too much water, not flowing. There we go, and I'll put a more opaque dot in there. And I'm gonna clean up a few of these little dots. All right, now let's make him blue. So what brush do I want to use? Actually, I think I'm going to use a rake brush. And I've got a really tiny one over here. I've got two that'll probably work. So the rake brush is basically a brush like it. This would be your normal filbert. Rake brush is like that. So with one brush stroke, you get a whole bunch of little lines. And I prefer with the rake brush, the filbert to the flat. I don't know if you can see that there. See how one's really flat straight across and one's more rounded. This gives me a more natural look. The flat ones are very difficult to get a natural look. Like your start and stop points are just too much. So that blue, we're just, I've got some phthalo blue already on the palette. So we'll use that. I'm gonna lighten it with some white. And the white, not only is it gonna lighten that, it's gonna make it more opaque so it'll actually show up. Let's see how this color looks. I have a feeling this brush is way too big. It needs to be lighter. A 
a lot lighter. Let's mix it in another spot. So I'm holding the brush and just trying to follow the direction of the feathers and I can correct this a little bit more in a moment here. Like the shape, so if it's not perfect, it's not a big deal, but I wanna get that texture. And if the color is too, like let's say it's too white, which it is, I'll just glaze blue over it, it'll look great. I do need to zoom in a bit. That should help some. Yeah, let me try the smaller one. This brush is getting too big for this area. It'll be really good for his body, but right there, not as much. This one might be too tiny though. This is a really tiny rake brush. Yeah, it's just working like a tiny filbert, but that works, I'll just go through it quickly. That's kind of giving me a rake brush vibe, but not, not as much. Yeah, mostly it's just working like a little filbert. Okay, we've got little chunks of feathers coming through here, it kind of dots out. Now it's not that every feather needs to be exact. That's not important at all, but you do want it close. You wanna pay attention to which direction these feathers move. You want them going in the right direction. You want them to be about the right width, about the right length. There are certain things that you want to be exact. I want the, the outline exact. I want the beak in the right place, the eye in the right place. That matters, but the feathers, the wind shifts, the bird fluffs up, the feathers are gonna move. So as long as you're close, it's good. And I'm not gonna sit there going, okay, 15 direction, feathers going this direction, 14 that direction, like that doesn't, it's not gonna make it look any better. Just get that general movement. And see how they cluster. Because if you look at that reference photo, we've got rows, so we've got a definite row here it's really white. That's okay because I'm going to glaze over that anyway. But we've got really white here, this row. And then it comes out this way. And then we've got another row back here. And if it gets to where you're using a rake brush or any brush, if no paint is coming out, add more paint and water the, to that brush. He's got a few little feathers up here, and I'll come back through with black to define this a little bit more, but he's got a few little guys that I'll glaze with blue to darken them up. And then he's got this section right here. It is poofed differently, so see how it clumps? Even if you're not painting along with me, go grab that reference photo so you can see what I'm looking at. And then this is separate. It's like a little triangle clump down here. And wait till I glaze over this. It'll make such a difference because right now everything's obviously really blue, like pale blue. We want like royal blue, real pretty. And all we have to do is glaze over it. I didn't even have to worry about getting the perfect color here knowing that I'm going to glaze over that. But I do want to make sure my light areas are more defined, a little bit lighter because anywhere where I glaze over it, it's going to get darker. Okay, we'll let that dry. Let's come down here. So here's another thing, watch the, oh, that's gonna be way too much paint. Dab that off on a paper towel, or my easel in my case. And I don't wanna try to cover all the black. Let that black show, let it work for you. That's your shadow now in between each feather. And if it feels awkward when you're painting feathers, don't feel like, oh, I'm just not good at this. I'm not gonna keep doing birds. No, that's how you get good at them. Trust me, my birds didn't all look like this to start with. You were lucky if you could tell it was a bird. Let me see, where does this feather go? So the flight feathers start here. 
So these feathers, like this one here, would be something like this. And this would be an area you could take your tracing and transfer paper if you want yours more exact. If you didn't want to freehand it in like what I'm doing, grab that tracing and transfer paper and transfer that image again where those feathers are. It's just really soft and kind of clumpy in the back here. These are smaller feathers. Remember, this will get way darker, so make it intentionally, if you're doing it this way where I'm, I'm not painting it the final color, I'm gonna do a glaze over. You want this to be lighter than what you want that end result to be. little wispy guys. We've got some smaller feathers here. Okay, and then these ones will get more white. Actually, they're more gray than white. It's got a little bit of black to it, so it's not too bright. Although I can glaze over it if it is. I'm gonna use the same brush. I'm just gonna hold it to the side to get these long lines. And there, that line is a little too thick. All I'm gonna do is take a clean brush with water and thin that out. Perfect. It doesn't even matter what clean brush with water. It can be like this one was a flat, you could use a filbert, but it does need to be in good shape. If it's frayed, that's not gonna give you the greatest results there because this is such a small area. And then I can also come back through with black later on. I'll probably do that with a liner brush. Again, if you've got questions, go ahead and leave them now. I'll be answering those at the end of the video or at the end of the stream. Just kind of little ones on the inside of the wing there. Okay, I'm gonna skip down hit and do the gray on his tail. So you can use that same brush, just gonna add a little bit of black to the white. A little bit more white. There we go. Take, actually, I'm gonna rinse that brush. I'm gonna to switch to a slightly fluffier dry brush and smudge that out a bit. Okay, another highlight here. Believe it or not, he's near done. Like the rest of this is gonna go really quick. Well, branch in the feet we still need to do. But the body's very fast. And then the glazing the color. Okay, go to rinse that. I'm gonna dry the blue and go ahead and do that now. Okay, next, glazing blue. So I'm going to take a, oh, that has paint all over it still. Didn't clean that very well. I'm going to take one of the Taquan bristled filberts. It doesn't even have to be in good condition. Like it's, it's kind of frayed. I'm gonna take my phthalo blue, thin that with a bit of water. I guess I could do it on camera, huh? And I'm just going to go right over. And look how, oops, I can't even see my own photo. There we go. Look how pretty and blue and like it just glows. You can see where it, actually it will look darker when it dries. Right now it's a bit light because it's wet. So the way the light's refracting through the color. Okay, so. Okay. 
Now I'm going to actually come while that's still wet, pull a few highlights over that. Let's brighten this up. Whoops, a little bit too much water there. Reload. See everything you're just experimenting. You'll do a brush stroke and be like, oh, too much. Just go reload it. Don't worry about it. It's not something like, I think people get in their head that every artist knows exactly every, like, like a recipe. You use two cups of this, five cups. No, you don't know. You're going to experiment as you work. That is how we paint. So don't get mad when things don't go perfectly right. That's kind of a normal part of the process. But work on it till it does look good. And I may glaze a little bit of blue back over this, but I want parts of this to be a lot brighter. Oh, I already love him so much. Or her. I actually don't know how you tell which is a male or female with these guys. A few little highlights. And as always, I reserve the right to come back and do a few little touch-ups tomorrow when I have fresh eyes, when I've not been sitting in front of it for this long. A few little details on the beak. I really like this brush. I like think it's better than a liner brush. It's so thin. I mean, no, I can't make a big long brush stroke like I could with a liner, but for like little blotchy marks like this, it is nice. Gotta get that detail in there. Okay, I may come back and do highlights, I probably will. But let's get onto the body. And now, okay, first I'm gonna come up with a better color. So I'm going to, do you wanna glaze that? No, I'm gonna do the texture first. There's so many different ways to get to the same end, as you can tell, because I can't make a decision on which way I wanna do that. Um, so we're gonna start with the little feathers here. Again, you to watch the direction that these feathers move in. They clump and cluster together. They're not random confetti lines all over. That's another mistake I see people make a lot is that they just put these random lines and it's like, no, look at the photo. There was no highlight there. I mean, not that it has to be exact, but go for at least close. At least pretend you're looking at that photo. See how I've got these, these lines, the way they, they move. Now, if you are new to painting birds, I would go more exact to your reference photo than what I'm going. I've done so many birds and so many feathers, I can still make them look like feathers and not have it be like, I, it's, it's much more of a guideline than a like recipe for me. But if you are new to that, go more exact, really look at that photo. And the longer you paint, you'll get to where you can take some artistic liberties and it'll still look like a bird, the feathers will look right or whatever subject you're working on. These little wispy guys, and this again is with a rake brush. I guess I could have mentioned that. And I'll have to go over it a few times with the rake brush as I adjust colors. So, okay, I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this and glaze over that, or dry it and then glaze over it. Okay. 
Okay, next, I need more of a yellowy, orange, goldy color. I'm just gonna throw a bunch of words out there and one of them will be the right color. I've actually got some orange. I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a glow than I initially had. Is that brush clean? No, it is not. That has a lot of blue on it. Glad I tested, because that would have made a mess, mixing that with the orange. Okay, so we've got some orange. I'm gonna pull some red oxide in, a little bit of yellow. I don't need the color to be perfect, but I know I'm a little bit closer than what I had. Thin that down with some water because we do not want that to be super opaque. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, got it. Wow. First try. That was lucky. So I mixed some yellow, I mixed some orange, and I mixed a little bit of red oxide. Did not expect to get it right first try. And it doesn't have to be exact. That, that's something that a lot of people get way too hung up on. If they only knew what color to paint it, theirs would be realistic too. No, right now I have a flat cartoon because it's about the values. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of deep violet and add some shadows in here. When you're working with oranges and yellows, don't do your shadows with black. You will make a muddy, ugly mess. Let's get a little bit more with the red oxide. I need to darken this up a bit. I'm going to pull a bit of the deep violet into that. See how now I'm starting to build up. It looks, uh, the lighting is a bit overexposed. And by a bit, I mean, holy crap, that's overexposed. Can I tone that down a bit? A little bit. It is really overexposed. So you're not seeing the, the shading that I've actually got, unfortunately. I'll hold it up on the other camera. That was one of the problems I had with the tech drama is that I couldn't get both good cameras to work. Will not go at work together. So much drama. Okay, I'm gonna rinse that. I'm going to dry this. And we're gonna come back on top with white again. We're just building this up in layers. Too much paint wipes them off. If you've got too much paint on a, a rake brush, you basically are just using it as a filbert, like a normal filbert or a normal flat, whatever brush type you're using. Just getting a hint of a few more of these feathers. Now the feathers right under the chin, those are more defined. I'm gonna do that with a liner brush instead of a rake brush. I want them a little bit more wiry looking. So using that number one liner brush again. Let's get some of these guys in a little bit more. Reload that brush. Too thick. There we go. And I'll glaze over that again too with the orangey color.
See how it's a little bit more stringy? Whereas this is the feathers, when you move down the chest, that got softer. So these ones are more individual, defined. And then the blue, actually we'll have some, we'll do that with a dark. Has to overlap the orange a bit here. So we're gonna pull some of this and let that overlap this way. Little bit of detailing in here. And then I also wanted to use black with a liner brush in between these feathers. Again, I will come back and clean a few of these things up. I want to show you, I don't think that color is looking right. Can you see? Yeah, that's a lot more accurate. You can see now oh, the glare is hitting that so bad, what that is looking like. Okay, oops, there we go. Okay, what do I want? Let's do more with the liner brush. It gives you a little bit more control. So normally when I use a rake brush, I'll use it for my base layers, but then I will typically come through and define lines a bit better. Oh, that has way too much paint on it. Define them a bit more with the individual strokes. That way it doesn't look too uniform. If you use the rake brush too much, it starts getting really like, it all looks the same. more of a glaze again. So just painting that few individuals. Just remember layer until it looks good. Well, that sets, that is not done, but I'm going, actually, I'll hair dry it and then I'll, I was gonna go do the branch, but I'll wait and do the branch after this, the bird's done. That looks way too like bright yellow orange. It does not, it is so much more muted in person. It looks so much better. This is why I wanted the good camera. The good camera gets the, the color better, but it, 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 it gave me the finger. I'm really glad I spent so much money on that camera for it to give me the finger. That's super awesome. I'm just gonna complain about everything today. It's just been one of those weeks. I'm giving myself permission to complain. There we go. Don't paint this just yellow. There is yellow mixed in with a bunch of colors. Even though I know it looks like on that camera that it's a bit like yellow, it really, it's more muted. You can really see more there. Lighten some of this up here on the belly. I'm gonna dry it before it starts to run because I thinned that a lot. It is going to want to beat up. brush is super frayed so it's almost working like a rake brush which is great for some of these bigger spots. But by mixing those it'll give me more of a tan. Get in there. Nope. I'm gonna pull a little bit of orange and yellow into that as well. You can make it easier on yourself. Just use brown if you have that. I like to mix what I already have out. Nope. I'm 
much better. And I can come on top with highlights and shadows from there. Too much water, reload. Yeah, screw it, I'll redraw the feet in. I'll show you how we use the tracing and transfer paper to fix things that you painted over like what I just did. So right now, same thing, it doesn't even matter what color it is. Let's say I went with one that was two peach, two whatever, it doesn't even matter. What matters is that my values are right when I get come through with the darks and the lights. And I'm not, I don't want to blend this. I want this to be a little choppy looking so we get that. It'll just easily like, with very little effort, it will look like you have texture on the bark. So I'm mixing the red oxide and black. I'm gonna use that on the shadow on the bottom. I'm just gonna let those brush strokes show as I blend that up. So we get that rougher kind of barky look. I'm doing a more impressionistic, a loose brush stroke there. So it has that bark look. See how I rounded off these brush strokes so it makes the branch seem now rounded. That's it, it's very simple. I don't want a ton of detail there, just very, very subtle shading. Also notice that it's not just even dark, like the whole line, it's darker, but see how some is up, down, up, down. You've got variation in there and that's gonna give you a more natural look than like a straight line of dark to straight. It'll look flat if you do straight, like highlight all the way through even on one side. So I'm going to take that tracing and transfer paper, stick him back on there, line it up, and redraw his feet. So I don't have to take a bunch of time trying to freehand it. Not that I can't, I mean I can, it just it takes more time. If you've already drawn it out, why, waste, why do it again? This is faster. And especially on a live stream, I am a fan of faster. So let's stick that on there. Where did, I lost my stylus. Could be anywhere over here. There it is. And I'm just gonna go over the feet and toes. Whoops, that's gonna have a line that isn't where it's supposed to be because it moved. We go, good enough. Up towards his legs here. I need way more red oxide. I'm gonna put a little bit of deep violet in there. Yeah, definitely you're gonna need some deep violet in that red oxide. And then his feet are just kind of this black and gray. really in shadow on this one. I'm just using my number one line, synthetic hog hair liner again. And I can make them all dark and come back through and put highlights on top.
Okay, and you can see right now those feet are obviously way too dark. So what I do, and I do that on purpose because it's gonna get way lighter when I cut them on top with the white. And you can see this is curved. They're all slightly curved. So this helps the foot and the toes to look more rounded. These little ridges that are on there. You know, my eyes can't even see that this is too tiny of detail right now because they're too blurry from sitting in front of it. So I'm not even catching some of this. But yeah, that looks, let me see if I can show you guys more accurately what this looks like. And what I'm gonna do tomorrow, I've got a little, see, yeah, it's still like too overexposed here. The green looks really accurate. The branch is pretty accurate. It's just, this isn't quite picking up right. 